back to see you again. Today we talk about the importance of azimuth and how to set it right. It is important to first set up these four parameters correctly before attempting to establish correct azimuth. The correct platter spindle to tone down pivot's distance, a perfectly level platter, the correct stylus tracking force, and the correct overhang distance of your cartridge. For correct overhang, make sure that your stylus is able to touch both now points on the Lofgren curve. Quick terminology, especially for new vinyl fans. This is the tone arm, the head shell, the cartridge body, the cantilever, and the stylus. Azimuth is about how perpendicular the stylus is to the record playing surface when viewed from the front of the cartridge body. When the stylus is sitting straight perpendicularly down into the groove, the stylus makes equal contact with both the inner groove and the outer groove area. When the stylus is tilting towards the inner groove, there will be more contact with the inner groove and less with the outer groove. Azimuth is off and there will be higher left channel information output and lower right channel information output. When the stylus is tilting towards the outer groove, there will be less contact with the inner groove and more with the outer groove. Azimuth is off and there will be lower left channel information output and higher right channel information output. Cartridge alignment protractors are often used to ensure that the stylus is able to track the ideal of grain curve for minimal distortion as the stylus moves across the record playing surface from start to finish. Two now points are marked on such protractors. To establish correct azimuth, I highly recommend those protractors that have two features, parallel hash marks at the two now points and a mirrored layer. Step 1. Lower the stylus onto the now points Squint our eyes a bit and see if the skinny cartridge cantilever is parallel to the hash marks on the protractor mirror. You can also check if the cartridge body left and right sides are parallel to the hash marks. Step 2. You also need to snap a photo with your digital camera and measure A. The distance between the left lower edge of the cartridge to its mirror image and B. The distance between the right lower edge of the cartridge to its mirror image and ensure that both distances A and B are the same. Adjust and twist your cartridge around its radial axis relative to the tone arm until you get the above requirements in steps 1 and 2 correct. With the above parameters established, your stylus azimuth should be pretty close to ideal and you have a very good starting point before we embark on the subsequent use of the phosgometer for fine tuning. We need to use the phosgometer because with all due respect to the cartridge manufacturers, they may not have set the stylus perfectly straight down from the cantilever. Thus, even if the above parameters in steps 1 and 2 are set up nicely, the stylus may still not be perfectly perpendicular 90 degrees to the record playing surface. With the phosgometer, we can make the minute adjustments necessary to ensure perfect precise azimuth. The tools you need here are the Ultimate Analog Test LP and the Phosgometer, both of which can be purchased from your local hi-fi retailer or online from musicdirect.com. This test LP is kindly made by Analog Productions. The first three tracks are the ones to be used with the Phosgometer in azimuth setting. The first track gives a 1kHz test tone, lateral in phase in mono. The second track is a 1kHz test tone on the left channel, that means only sonic information is present on the inner groove while the outer groove gives silence. The third track is a 1kHz test tone on the right channel, that means only sonic information is present on the outer groove while the inner groove gives silence. The phosgometer comes with an easy to understand user manual. Calibration of this phosgometer is easy and explained as well on the third last page. 
Now let's get going. We connect the RCA interconnects leading off from the tone arm to the terminals on the phosgometer. Next, let's put the test LP on the turntable. The tracks are well spaced apart physically on the LP such that it is very easy for us to aim and drop the stylus for whichever tracks we want to utilize. Kudos to Analog Productions. Play the second track, which is the 1kHz test tone on the left channel, and you will see that only the left channel green lights on the phosgometer will light up, and the needle swings to a certain reading. Note this reading, L. Next, play the third track, which is the 1kHz test tone on the right channel, and you will see that only the right channel green lights will light up, and the needle swings to a certain reading. Note this reading, R. Here, the manual says that if the left and right channel readings are the same or as close as possible, one would have achieved correct azimuth. My readings are 15.1 for the left channel and 15.0 for the right channel. Thus, you have seen the fruits of my labor a few months ago when I first got this Dynavector cartridge and got it carefully set up. My azimuth setting is correct. Playing track 1, the lateral in phase mono track allow us to counter-check and to illustrate that channel balance is also achieved. I'm going to play track 1 now and look carefully at the meter dial on the phosgometer. It flickers only by a bit to the right by less than one division unit. What this means is that my azimuth is highly ideal and both channels are balanced. When the left and right channels readings are pretty far off, it would imply that the stylus azimuth is off and not correct. For example, when the left channel reading is significantly bigger than the right channel reading, it means that the stylus is tilted and pointing more towards the left, reading more left channel inner groove information than the right channel outer groove information. You correct this by adjusting the axial tilt of the cartridge anti-clockwise. When the right channel reading is significantly higher than the left channel reading, it means that the stylus is tilted and pointing more towards the right, reading more right channel outer groove information than the left channel inner groove information. You correct this by adjusting the axial tilt of the cartridge clockwise. Thus, the aim is to have left and right channel readings the same or very very close to each other and the channel balance needle swing to be as minimal as possible. Once these are achieved, you can pack up, relax and enjoy the music coming off from the grooves with maximal channel separation and minimal crosstalk, very precise stereo imaging and a great live sound stage. Thank you friends for watching and see you again!